Good afternoon. This is a nutritional assessment of Jane. Jane is overall a healthy 14-year-old who lives at home with her father, age 45, her mother, age 41, her sister, age 8, and her brother, age 4. Family history on the mother's side has obesity and hyperlipidemia. On her father's side, obesity and type 2 diabetes. Jane's diet is leading to her obesity. The doctor's report shows that she has not does not have any other chronic problems. The doctor's report also shows that gain, Jane has gained 10 to 15 pounds each year for six years. This has led to her being significantly overweight. This is a cause for the family's concern about how to manage Jane's weight. Even though Jane's healthy, there are some concerns from her lab work. One problem which is reported is her lab work is slightly high in fasting blood glucose at 116 milligrams per deciliter. Along with her obesity, this could indicate that she is at risk to become diabetic. Her father is obese and has type 2 diabetes. This is also indicating Jane is at risk for type 2 diabetes later in life. The family history shows Jane's mother has hyperlipidemia, and Jane's lipid profile also indicates that she is at risk for cardiovascular problems later in life. Her HDL is low at 36 milligrams per deciliter, and her LDL is high at 113 milligrams per deciliter. Cholesterol problems are often genetic, so Jane having similar issues to her mother is not unexpected. The last issue concerning the family is their financial situation, where they often run out of money at the end of the month. They use fast food often to save time and money. This heavy reliance on fast food, as we'll see later in the assessment of her diet, is responsible for much of the problems in Jane's diet. The two largest contributors to unhealthy eating are lack of funds and lack of time. These need to be considered in the recommendations. So you can see Jane's weight and height. She is 152.9 pounds and is 69 inches tall, which puts her body mass index at 28. This is in the 96th percentile. It puts her in the obese range, as you can see in the chart. For Jane to reach, reach her healthy BMI, she should weigh below 126 pounds for her age and height. One of the goals of the diet and exercise program is for Jane to lose 27 pounds over time and reach a healthy weight. I did a calculation of Jane's nutritional needs using the USDA RDI calculator. I've listed that and we used a sedentary lifestyle. The report did not really mention her current level of activity and that's very important to know. Increasing her level of activity could be a great way for her to improve her diet. We did an assessment of her current diet. We used the Chronometer website and a three-day food diary. And the assessment shows the reason for Jane's obesity, elevated blood glucose, and poor lipid profile. Even taking into account the genetic factors Jane has, her poor diet is most likely causing all of her problems. Each day her diet is Excessive in calories by 886, 135, and 512 calories. This excessive consumption of calories is creating an energy surplus, which is why Jane is gaining 10 to 15 pounds per year. For this, I used the lightly active model. Understanding Jane's physical activity level is important. If she has a sedentary lifestyle, this excessive calories is even worse. Jane's diet is also excessive in carbohydrates, mostly from processed foods. At 322 grams, 500, or 356 grams, and 285 grams, the range for Jane is 213 to 307 grams per day, with at least half from whole grains. This high load of processed carbohydrates with very little whole grains contributes to her obesity and fasting blood glucose problems. If she maintains a diet which includes this level of processed carbohydrates, she is increasing her risk of type 2 diabetes later in life. Since Jane is already showing elevated fast blood, fasting blood glucose, she should have a diet lower in carbohydrates 
and monitor her fasting blood glucose regularly. As we see type 2 diabetes occurring earlier and earlier in life, it is critical that Jane address her reliance on processed carbohydrates in her normal diet. The fats Jane consumes also are a problem. She is high in all the fats we want her to be low in. Total fat, she is at 126 grams, 107 grams, 103 grams each day. We want her below 76 grams. She's also high in saturated fats at 38 grams, 32 grams, and 35 grams per day. We want that below 20 grams. And she's also very high in trans fats at 1.9 grams, one day as high as 4.6 grams, and another day at 2.1 grams. We want her as close to zero as possible. This needs to be corrected to improve her lipid profile and reduce her risk of cardiovascular problems later in life. With her family of history of hyperlipidemia, Jane should watch her fats and monitor her lipid profile with her doctor regularly. Jane's diet is also not providing the proper micronutrients. She's regularly low in key, key vitamins for age, vitamin D, K, and E. She is also regularly low in calcium. So for the recommendations, I believe that most if not all of the health problems Jane has will be correct, co corrected with a proper diet. I would recommend Jane and her family see a nutritional professional to help them understand what a proper diet is and how to implement one. I would recommend Jane and her family receive education from the SNAP-Ed program in her state. With the education and knowledge, the family can understand how to make better food choices. I would show the family how to create a meal plan, how to use tools like chronometer to easily check that the diet is balanced. Jane's level of activity is not addressed in the report, and this should be part of the education of the family. Improving the diet is a top priority, but finding ways for her to increase her physical activity is important. The goal is for sustained improvement of physical activity, so finding physical activities Jane enjoys will make maintaining them easy. Since they run out of money at the end of each month, I would also recommend Jane's family apply to SNAP to supplement their food budget. The nutrition professionals can also help guide the family and help making food choices that are low cost and fit in the monthly budget. The diet needs to change in four main ways. One, reduce the total amount of calories consumed. Two, reduce the amount of carbohydrates and increase the percent of whole grain carbohydrates. Three, correct the fat consumption. Reduce total fat, reduce saturated fat, reduce trans fat. All this while maintaining the right balance of mono and polyunsaturated fats and the balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fats. And also ensure that she gets all the mi micronutrients in the diet. I would include a mi multivitamin. With the proper education and tools, the family can learn to create healthy meals and stay within their monthly budget. The reliance on fast food is the large contributor to the poor diet. I would recommend the family start cooking and eating meals at home. The second largest barrier to healthy eating on a budget is time. When planning their meals, choose time-friendly recipes. Easy to prepare meals after a long day will help you avoid the fast food choice. So we've created a three-day meal plan as a sample for the family. This plan has a small energy deficit, which over time will improve Jane's weight. I would counsel the family and Jane not to try to do very aggressive weight reduction diets. The data on these diets shows that severe calorie restriction will reduce the body's resting metabolism rate, which will e erase any short-term gains. I would also explain that eating healthy is a lifestyle, not a diet. It should be part of the family's long-term health strategy. The current three-day meal plan has an energy deficit of 1,476 calories per week, and this is based on the lightly active model. If Jane could increase her activity to moderately active, the deficit would increase to 2,491 calories per week. And also, I think Jane will need the education recommended to make the choices at school where she eats many of her lunches. The plan is lower in carbohydrates, which will help her avoid insulin resistance and possible type 2 diabetes. The plan has a good balance of fats. This will help her lipid profile. 
and I would encourage Jane to follow up with her doctor and continue to monitor both fasting blood glucose and her lipid profiles. So here's day one's meal plan. I chose eggs and coffee, which is something she regularly eats. This is also a quick and easy meal. Lunch is a sandwich, which again is similar to her current diet, an easy to make meal. I added a salad to add some fresh vegetables and olive oil to help her fat profile. I'm also replacing all the soda with sparkling water. Um, I'm using almond milk and rice dream milk in place of regular milk. This will help with calories and fat profile. Dinner again is an easy to prepare meal that the family can make. Um, this will help them avoid the choice to go to fast food. I also am including snacks in her meal plans because she currently enjoys snacks and I thought that would be helpful. And at the end, you see, I have a multivitamin to ensure she's getting her proper macronutrients. Day two, um, also picking an easy to prepare meal. The turkey sausage and eggs is similar to the Jimmy Dean sausage sandwich, which she currently eats. Is a much better choice for fats, carbohydrates, and calories, but it'll also be very similar. Again, I'm adding coffee, which she typically drinks. For lunch, uh, a grilled chicken salad is an easy to make meal. It'll add some fresh vegetables, and using grilled chicken as opposed to the chicken patty she's used to will also be more healthy. healthy. Dinner is a simple to make grilled salmon with Swiss chard and olive oil and corn. If she doesn't have a grill, the salmon can be baked. It takes as little as 15 minutes. Also, again, I'm adding some snacks and a multivitamin. On day three, you'll see there's a breakfast you can make in a hurry. I've added some sugar here in the yogurt just to help with compliance. Americans really enjoy their yogurt very sweet, so trying to make someone eat sugar-free might be difficult. Also, the lunch is a similar lunch to what she's had, but it's a grilled chicken sandwich as opposed to the chicken patty, which she currently eats. It will be similar, but a much more healthy choice. Also, I added some fresh vegetables, and again, on dinner, um, choosing pizza, which is something she currently enjoys, but along with the pizza, I'm adding fresh vegetables and a banana and sparkling water. I've also added some dark chocolate for her to enjoy and an apple as a snack. So in conclusion, Jane's part of the 18% of her children who are now obese. Jane's diet is probably a very typical American diet. It's very reliant on fast foods, which is loaded with excess calories, processed carbohydrates, saturated fats, and trans fats. If she can make the change to a healthy diet, she can avoid all the issues she can have later in life, like obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular problems.